Throughout his life, Zhu Geliang had three major regrets, following the wrong person, trusting the wrong person, and marrying the wrong person. At the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty, the world was in chaos. Various warlords sharpened their swords and were eager to establish their presence in the tumultuous times. However, while some only made brief appearances, others maintained their prestige throughout their lives. Cao Cao was undoubtedly among the latter, experiencing the exhilarating feeling of commanding the feudal lords by holding the emperor in his power. How many could truly understand such satisfaction? Liu Bei and Sun Quan both understood this dynamic well. After all, both of them became emperors during their lifetimes, wielding more prestige than Cao Cao ever did while alive. However, neither could truly be considered the supreme ruler of all under heaven. At best, they were emperors who dominated a specific region. In terms of territory and strength among the three states of Cao Wei, Dongwu, and Shu Han, Shu Han could be ranked first, albeit from the bottom. Speaking of this, there might be some who feel it's unfair to judge Shu Han so harshly, thinking highly of its strength. However, it's important to be patient and consider the full picture. Shu Han was not just limited by its small territory and strength, but also by its lack of talent and leadership issues. For example, comparing the strategists of the same period, Cao Cao had five major strategists, and Sun Quan had four great commanders. Any one of these nine individuals would command genuine respect. However, Liu Bei only had Wolong and Feng Chu, and unfortunately, Feng Chu barely contributed to Liu Bei cause before his untimely death. Thus, for a long time, Shu Han relied heavily on Zhuge Liang, especially after Liu Bei's death, when Zhuge Liang became the de facto leader of Shu Han, effectively using the young emperor to command his ministers. So, what's the difference between Zhuge Liang and Cao Cao from the perspective of a powerful minister? There are differences. Zhu Geliang is universally praised by later generations, while Cao Cao is widely vilified. The reason for this disparity can largely be attributed to the author of a romance of the Three Kingdoms, Luo Guanzhong, or as we might affectionately call him, Luo Guanshui. Even though Zhu Geliang was incredibly intelligent and strategic, he was still immortal and not without flaws. It is said that his three major regrets in life were choosing the wrong leader in Liu Bei, placing his trust in the wrong person with Ma Su, and marrying the wrong woman in Huang Yuying. Whether there's merit to these claims is worth exploring. Despite his genius, Zhu Geliang was still human and not perfect, and these summarized regrets, following the wrong leader in Liu Bei, trusting the wrong person in Ma Su, and marrying the wrong woman in Huang Yuying, reflect that complexity. Is there any validity to these claims? Let's delve deeper. In fact, even if Liu Bei had not made the three visits to the thatched cottage to invite Zhu Geliang, Cao Cao would not have sought him out. Even if, hypothetically, Cao Cao had sought out Zhu Geliang, it's not certain that Zhu Geliang would have agreed to assist Cao Cao. By the time Liu Bei made his visits, Cao Cao already had a stable leadership team and did not lack strategists. With his five major strategists, any one of whom could nearly match Zhu Geliang in ability, Cao Cao had no reason to humbly request the assistance of an untested Zhu Geliang. Moreover, Zhu Geliang's ambition was vast, and Cao Cao's distrustful nature would have prevented Zhu Geliang from becoming a leading figure under Cao Cao's command. Therefore, claiming that Zhu Geliang made a mistake in following Liu Bei is not objective. After all, besides the strategist lacking Liu Bei, who else would have valued Zhu Geliang so highly? After Liu Bei's death, Zhu Geliang effectively took control of Shu Han, holding both military and political power, ensuring that Liu Chan remained unburdened by state affairs. Truly, he was a dedicated and responsible minister. When Zhu Geliang felt it was time to do something meaningful, he remembered his Longzhong plan. He wanted to restore the Han Dynasty, so he decided to launch a northern expedition against Cao Wei. During the first northern expedition, the ambitious Zhu Geliang returned defeated. This was because Ma Su lost the critical position of Jietian, a vital stepping stone for the campaign. 
Furious, Zhuge Liang executed Ma Su and several other officials responsible for defending Jietian. It was this incident that led to the perception of Zhuge Liang having misplaced his trust in Ma Su. Had he not blindly trusted Ma Su and appointed a more reliable general to defend Jietian, Zhuge Liang's northern expedition might have been successful, avoiding what is considered one of the major regrets of his life. Upon closer examination, the situation with Ma Su is not as straightforward as it seems. The reason Zhuge Liang trusted Ma Su was not because Ma Su deceived him, but because Zhuge Liang genuinely recognized Ma Su's talent. When Zhuge Liang was dealing with Meng Huo and others, Ma Su advised him to win hearts rather than resort to force. Consequently, Zhuge Liang took his advice, successfully won over Meng Huo, and gained the support of the people in Nanjong, ensuring they never rebelled as long as Zhuge Liang was there. This was precisely the capability of Ma Su that Zhuge Liang had seen. However, Ma Su turned out to be akin to Zhao Kuo of the Three Kingdoms period, skilled in theory but lacking in practical military command. Therefore, it wasn't that Zhuge Liang misplaced his trust in Ma Su, rather, Ma Su failed to live up to Zhuge Liang trust. There's a saying that behind every successful man is a great woman, and Zhuge Liang's wife, Huang Yueying, is indeed very famous, considered to be among the ugliest women in ancient Chinese history, second only to the legendary Four Ugly Women of China. After Zhuge Liang married Huang Yueying, people in their hometown mocked him, likening his choice to choosing an ugly wife as well. Many believe that marrying Huang Yueying was one of Zhuge Liang's regrets, as who wouldn't want a beautiful wife for companionship? However, despite her looks, Huang Yueying was extremely intelligent and played a crucial role as Zhuge Liang's wise and capable partner. It is said that some of Zhuge Liang's inventions, such as the wooden ox and flowing horse, which were military logistics tools, were actually invented by Huang Yueying. Moreover, Zhuge Liang's marriage to Huang Yueying was also influenced by her father, Huang Chengye, who was a renowned scholar with a strong social background at the time. Was related by marriage to Liu Biao, as both men had married sisters of Cai Ma. According to the familial hierarchy, Liu Biao was Huang Yueying's maternal uncle, and Cai Ma was her uncle by marriage. Cai Ma and Liu Biao were influential figures in Jinzhou. With such a strong background, Huang Yueying's marriage was advantageous for Zhuge Liang's career. Later, when Liu Bei sought Zhuge Liang, it was the result of the promotion by these connections. Zhuge Liang might not have been attracted to Huang Yueying's appearance, but he valued her ability to support his ambitions. Moreover, Huang Yueying was a virtuous wife and mother, making her marriage hardly a regret in his life. From this perspective, the so-called three major regrets of Zhuge Liang's life, following Liu Bei, trusting Ma Su, and marrying Huang Yueying cannot be considered true regrets. Each of these decisions brought tangible benefits to Zhuge Liang. If life offered a second chance, I believe Zhuge Liang would still choose to do these three things without hesitation. If you like this video, please help to click a free like and subscribe. Your support is my motivation to update the video. Thank you. We will see you next time.